I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Today I'm in Santa Cruz, California, and I wanted to do something really special for my 80th episode of Late Bloomer. Since I've been nurturing monarch butterflies in the Late Bloomer garden since almost the beginning of my gardening four years ago, we're gonna take a look at some of those experiences and also we're gonna chase down some overwintering monarch sites on the coast of California. After interviewing a monarch citizen scientist in July 2012, I wanted to try and help the monarch butterfly. I couldn't wait to get started. I picked up whatever milkweeds and butterfly-loving plants were available at the nursery. Monarchs can perceive colors, which is why they're so drawn to tropical milkweed. I thought, how will monarchs find my garden when no one around me is growing milkweed? But they did. By October 1st, they were regularly seen laying eggs. Monarchs are attracted to many colorful flowers for their nectar, including milkweed. They can't eat, they can only sup nectar through their proboscis. Females need the energy for laying eggs, usually on the underside of leaves. They fly around and then lay one egg every minute or so. But monarchs only lay eggs on milkweed, because that's all the caterpillars will eat. Look for varieties of milkweed native to your area to best facilitate their winter migration. Bees love milkweed too. <laughs> Monarchs molt or shed their skin four times as they grow. These intervals are called instars. It's a good idea to leave them alone during molting. By October 20th, my first caterpillars were in fifth instar and they were glorious. I marveled at how they could hang upside down on the underside of leaves and take shelter from wind and rain. Did you know only one out of 10 monarch eggs makes it to a butterfly? There's a lot of hazards along the way, like wasps who love the eggs for their young. That's protein. And the caterpillars are somewhat immune to being eaten because milkweed is toxic to most birds. Why do I love monarchs so much? Well, first of all, they're gorgeous. And second, they're endangered, so we really need to try and protect them and grow milkweed to increase their numbers. Third, they're pollinators, of course, as all butterflies and moths. And fourth, they don't eat your veggies. The caterpillars don't eat your veggies. They only eat milkweed, which is a weed that <laughs> can't hurt your garden. It only helps your garden. I encourage everyone to grow milkweed, preferably native to your area milkweed, so that the monarchs go when and where they need to go. I knew a lot about monarchs by this past Christmas, but I'd never seen them overwintering. We set off on a drive up the California coast. From Los Angeles to Santa Cruz, we stopped at four sites. In Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, I only spotted a few butterflies, but I found a huge cluster at Halcyon Hill. They were high up in the eucalyptus trees. It was almost 3 p.m. and 48 degrees and too cold to fly. We hit the road. <laughs> it was just starting to rain when we came to the monarch butterfly grove at Pismo State Beach. A few thousand monarchs were clinging in the trees. Butterflies can't fly with wet wings. They're too heavy. I knew they wouldn't be moving in that weather, <laughs> but I did, back to the car. I called ahead and knew there were only about a thousand monarchs at Natural Bridges State Beach in Santa Cruz, which is a great place to visit to learn about the monarch migration and other wildlife in the area. Walkways take you over the wetlands to view the monarchs. Christmas Day, we hit the mother load at the Lighthouse Field State Beach. In a grove near the lighthouse was where all the action was. Thousands of monarchs. Oh, they're starting to fly. In just a couple of hours, we're going to see so many butterflies flying, but it's still about 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's um, cold, and butterflies well, monarchs, butterflies, bees, they really don't fly until it's at least 52, 55 degrees. So they have to warm up their 
sometimes they've been rained on all night. So they've got to dry out their wings and warm them up in the sun and then they start to fly. Uh, the main reason that they're here is because of the eucalyptus tree's flower and they feed off those flowers. They forage off of that in the winter. Um, and in this particular spot, there's a Monterey pine right underneath a stand of eucalyptus trees. And there's more for them to grab onto in the Monterey pine than in the eucalyptus. So uh, they hang out in the, the pine and then they fly all around and feed in the eucalyptus flowers. As amazing is the whole migration of the monarch butterfly, the transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly is even more miraculous. Check it out. <laughs> now, the thing I could not understand about my monarchs is that They've eaten and eaten and they're completely full and they know it's time. Um, they go off and they hang from a branch like a candy cane upside down. Okay, imagine hanging from a branch by your feet upside down in the shape of a candy cane for a day. And then all of a sudden, I'm not watching, I go in the house, I come back and the thing is mint green and it's a completely different shape. And I could never figure out how that happened. It was such a mystery. How does black and white stripes turn to mint green in a half an hour? How is that even possible? And I finally witnessed this. This skin, you're hanging upside down, right? I can't do it, but the skin zips down from the back and splits open and just wads up and drops off the end. And underneath that black and yellow and white striped skin, is a mint green blob that wiggles around like this for off and on for about an hour. And at the end of that, it's formed its shape. It has a beautiful shiny gold dotted band around it and it stays like that until it's ready to come out of the chrysalis. It could take two to three weeks or four to five weeks. It really depends on the temperature. Early in the morning they're camouflaged because the underside of wings are pale yellow. It's only when they spread their wings does the tree come to life with burnt orange. One by one they lift off to fly around in the warm winter sun. What kind of bird is it? A hawk? Oh wow, just don't move, okay? I'll be over there in a second. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna have to go see this hawk. After all, this is the California coast and there's so much incredible wildlife. <sighs> and I'm happy to share that with you. If you're just tuning in to Late Bloomer for the first time, I hope you'll go back and watch all four seasons. And if you've been with me, thank you so much for your support. And please share Late Bloomer with a friend. And I look forward to seeing you in season five. <laughs> you know the rest. I'm Kay. I'm a Late Bloomer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. You know, if they get a cat, if they get a monarch caterpillar in their mouth, they're probably going to go. Hold on, hold that thought. Oh, that tastes so good. All right, I dare you, come and land on my hand.